Uh, hello and welcome to our channel again. Uh, today we have another uh, Volkswagen Passat with uh, two liter TDI engine, common rail. So uh, the vehicle has come with the symptom of engine overheating. As you can see, it's two liter TDI blue motion and uh, it's Volkswagen Passat and it's 64 Ridge in the United Kingdom. So the customer is complaining that uh, on the motorway, along the motorway, when the speed reaches uh, at approximately 70 miles per hour or above. So the engine overheating and the uh, beeping message, red message coming on the dashboard and, stay, and stating that stop engine. Mm, so <clears throat> uh, today we are going, we are going to investigate it, this. So to investigate this, so I have removed the engine underneath cover, so I'm going to put that back and uh, I'm going to take the vehicle uh, to a road test drive or to a trip and see if we can confirm the customer complaint. Okay, as you can see, the temperature has reached to 105 degrees of Celsius. So 1995, 100, 105 degrees of Celsius. As you can see, the uh, temperature gauge has uh, close to 110. Uh, degrees of Celsius. Now I'm going to uh, take you to the uh, engine compartment uh, and uh, check the radiator uh, temperature with this infrared uh, uh, temperature gauge or sensor or uh, gun, whatever you call it. So as you can see, the temperature is getting close to the engine temperature is getting close to 110 uh, degrees of Celsius. So now I'm going to take you to the engine compartment and see. So 
so as you can see the fan or at its full speed the boy so as you can see the radiator temperature is only 44 and here 44 as 41 so if you can see he's there This is 80 degrees of Celsius. This is uh, uh, this hose is before the uh, thermostat housing, and uh, also if I show you, this is if you can see, this is the. output has and it's mainly 4441 so, as you can see 39 This is the thermostat output, I mean that the thermostat is located between this hose and the engine compartment here. As you can see it's 37, 38, so it means that the thermostat is stuck closed or the radiator is blocked <coughs> or maybe the water pump is not working. So first I'm going to remove the thermostat and check it whether it's functioning or not. So <clears throat> if the thermostat is functioning, the most possibility is going to be the radiator blockage because this is the output. As you can see, this is the output. If that is the water pump, that would have been very, very cold. So it means that this is... This is... As you can see. So if that was the water pump, this area might have been taller than the engine compartment. This is the engine compartment as you can see it's 107 and here eighty one okay as you can see uh the <coughs> Uh, engine temperature gauge is returning back slowly to uh, 90 degrees because the uh, radiator fan is operating at its full speed and as you saw that the temperature at the radiator was approximately 40 37 so one uh, uh, one side of the radiator one end or one corner of the radiator was 37 and the other was 41 and also the output from the radiator going to the uh, thermostat uh, housing so that was also 37 so it means that the thermostat is not opening to circulate the water so first i'm going to remove the thermostat housing and check uh, for its functioning so i'm going to heat that up in the boiling water and then see if the thermostat is opening but as you can see the uh, fan is still operating and uh, also we are
This end of the radiator, this is the front of the vehicle as you can see, this is the front of the vehicle, so this end, uh, radiator, radiator temperature was 37 here, and here this end was 40. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Today is new days, and uh, yesterday uh, you saw that the engine was overheating. Uh, so uh, I suspect uh, three possibilities. One, the thermostat. Uh, two, the water pump. Three, the radiator blockage. So today I'm going to narrow this problem. Uh, first, I'm going to check the uh, water pump operation or function. As you can see here, here, uh, this is the uh, coolant return uh, flow to the expansion tank or to the coolant reservoir. So uh, I'm going to disconnect this hose uh, and uh, then start the engine and uh, see if there is any uh, output from this hose. Uh, any coolant coming out of this hose. If the coolant was coming out from this hose, it means that the uh, water pump is functioning, the water pump is not faulty. So that <coughs> will eliminate suspicion of the water pump. Okay, now I'm going to start the engine and see if the coolant is coming out of this hose. Okay, I've started the engine as you can see. Uh, coolant is emerging from the uh, <clears throat> from this hose. Now I'm going to rev the engine. That should increase a little bit the uh, uh, coolant coolant which is emerging from this hose. We should uh, increase with the uh, engine RPM uh, going up. Okay, as you saw, that the <coughs> coolant, the coolant uh, outcome from the hose was increasing with the engine uh, RPM uh, going up. So now we have eliminated that the coolant pump or the water pump is functioning. So <clears throat> next task is to check whether it's going to be the radiator or the thermostat. Okay, as you can see, uh, this is the uh, coolant house, uh, 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 cooling system, hose, uh, hoses uh, diagram. So if you see here, so 
the thermostate is located uh, is located here so the pump circulate the coolant clockwise this way, as you can see the arrows so <coughs> uh, the coolant circulates free of restriction restriction here as you can see so <coughs> when the coolant this is the coolant uh, distributing house uh, house or housing coolant distributor housing located at the uh, left side of the uh, engine uh, so uh, when the water pump pushes the coolant, coolant that way it exit from the cylinder head and cylinder block and going back here as you can see back here uh, because the thermostat is located here it's this uh, coolant uh, circulates free of restriction back here and this is the radiator so <clears throat> when this coolant exit from the cylinder block and return back here without restriction so they there will not be any pressure to push the coolant to the radiator because the pressure is increased by this hose because this pathway is open to the coolant and that returns back to the front of the engine and uh, so <clears throat> when i uh, check the temperature of the hose so the hose temperature here was also up close to the uh, fuel gauge which was showing on the dashboard and here too so <clears throat> when the coolant temperature was too low because this coolant was stationary and also when i was driving the vehicle the motion air was entering the radiator so the radiator was uh, kept cooling by the uh, motion uh, by the air by the motion entering air through the radiator and also we had the <coughs> p2185 as you can see we had this one and it says engine coolant temperature sensor to circuit high the sensor 2 also called g83 so now i'm going to explain uh, this sensor is located just here if you can see it's located here so <clears throat> as the <clears throat> water the coolant exits end of the cylinder or from the uh, coolant distributing housing here so there is very very little pressure that coolant goes here and that enter the EGR cooler this is the EGR cooler and exit back coming this way and through this auxiliary pump coming here so when this path way or pathway of the coolant is closed because the red, the thermostat is located here this coolant cannot go to the engine so that will stay blocked here so when the engine temperature rises so one coolant temperature which is called coolant temperature one or g62 located here so the voltage of this sensor is low because they, there is no res, res, restriction as the engine heats up so the sensor voltage drops down but here this coolant sensor a uh, voltage is high because the temperature is low as you can see the wiring diagram so when the <coughs> water or the coolant exits from the engine 
So part, uh, a large part of the coolant returns back without restriction to the front of the engine. So when the pressure is decreased here because the coolant is returning free back to the front of the engine, so there will not be any pressure. As you can see, so <coughs> this coolant goes then that way with very, very little pressure. And the sensor is located here, so I'm going to show you on the engine bay as well, that sensor. So and return here, back, this is EGR cooler, EGR cooler. So exit from the EGR cooler and coming back, and this is the auxiliary pump. And as you can see, the exit for the auxiliary pump is blocked here, so the water cannot go here because the, the thermostat is bl blocked. For, so for this reason, there was no any motion or any flow of the coolant through the radiator and the high speed of the vehicle uh, was keeping the radiator cold as I measured. Uh, so it was uh, 23 and 23, 23 here, 23 here. But uh, unfortunately, I couldn't record that because I was on the motorway and it was unsafe to record on the motorway because this stop was just for emergency purposes. So here, when I stopped the vehicle, and uh, so when the vehicle is stopped, no uh, motion air was entering through the radiator when, and so this uh, temperature has gone a little bit up to 37 or 40, I think, or it was 40. So now, we are going to eliminate this one as well, because this coolant flow directly back to the front of the engine without restriction. So that will decrease pressure, coolant coming to the radiator. So for this reason, we think that the radiator is not blocked. And another thing, because uh, here, uh, as the vehicle is here, the vehicle has still got uh, coolant G12, so which is uh, which uh, prevents, this coolant prevents any uh, rust or blockage creating uh, within the radiator. As you can see, uh, this is the uh, coolant temperature uh, sensor number two, this one. This one. So, and this hose, let me, if I can uh, show you, this hose has gone to the EGR cooler, cooler, cooler and returned back here and connected here to the hose, which cannot be seen. And that then goes to the thermostat. So when the thermostat is closed, there will not be any flow in this hose. In this hose, in this hose. Because this vehicle does not have EGR cooler, uh, uh, coolant bypass valve, so instead uh, this EGR valve uh, uses thermostat to uh, allows uh, to allow the coolant flow instead of the uh, newer mo model which has the uh, cooler EGR uh, cooler coolant uh, bypass valve as you can see here so until the thermostat is closed there is no any uh, uh, coolant flow through this well, there, there is some very, very tiny because there is another uh, <coughs> uh, very, very tiny uh, hoses connected to that, but it's the main flow is, uh, is uh, uh, restricted by the thermostat. Uh, this tiny hose 
which I have shown you, this is the uh, return flow to the uh, expansion tank is also part of this hose, as you can know. Actually, there is no any other path. No any other path until the uh, thermostat is not activated. So this is restricted here. Uh, now uh, I'm going to drain the coolant so and uh, I'm not going to record that but uh, I will show you that uh, which hose uh, to disconnect and drain the coolant then I'm going to uh, remove the battery uh, air filter housing with this hose here uh, this uh, and then I will uh, uh, show you later what I'm going to do to reach the thermostat uh, to remove it. Okay, to drain the coolant, you need to open the expansion tank up and remove it. Then raise the vehicle if you have ramp access. Otherwise, just uh, put the front of the vehicle on the axle stands. Okay, I have removed the engine underneath cover. Now, I'm going to uh, one so <laughs> to drain the coolant uh, from the system uh, you need to just uh, disconnect these two hoses this one and this one and uh, hold underneath a big tray uh, not to uh, spell the uh, coolant anywhere. Okay, now I'm going to bring the vehicle down and remove the, uh, disconnect the battery and uh, uh, remove the battery tray. So.
Okay. <coughs> this hose is secured by this screw, this. So to have access to this screw, you need to remove this distribution house, distributing house, cooling distributing house. Because I didn't want to remove this, but you have no access to this screw, which holds this one. This hose. This hose. So you need to remove, remove this first. Because you cannot have access to this screw. First you need to remove this housing. Okay, the uh, manufacturer service manual says do not, uh, didn't say to remove this one. It actually says remove the alternator. So I'm going to remove this one instead of alternator and try if I can remove the thermostat housing with the thermostat. So the um, uh, manufacturer service manual says remove the alternator to have access. To remove the alternator, we need to <coughs> remove the uh, fan belt or uh, auxiliary drive belt and then alternator, uh, then this one. So uh, the uh, uh, dipstick uh, tube with the dipstick, so uh, that has to be removed anyway, whether you remove the alternator or remove this one, the throttle valve or the throttle body. So I'm going uh, to try to remove the throttle valve instead of alternator if I can have access to the uh, thermostat housing to remove it. Okay, now I'm going to remove this clamp. This one you can see. Yes.
like I have I move this clamp backward but if you do them, uh, that from underneath that would be alright that's going to be easy so now I'm going to disconnect this hose and see so okay I have disconnected the bottom hose you might be able to see it uh, wait, wait, you can. this is the hose Uh, one cable toy, plastic cable toy goes here. So once I have removed uh, this screw there. That's here there. Shade something. So it's this one. Uh, this screw, this screw then this has to be pushed that way that way to be disconnected from the uh, thermostat housing this was this metal okay I have uh, disconnected this the uh, second sensor of the coolant second uh, temperature sensor of the coolant so high pressure uh, pump uh, fuel temperature sensor and uh, move that away here so uh, use this type of spanner Uh, this is M12 Okay, now I'm going to pull that that way, that way. Okay, now this hose uh, this I think it's plastic it's uh, disconnected uh, from the uh, thermostat housing I'm, go I'm going to show you uh, 
if you can see That's from there where you can see the flow of the uh, the coolant is emerging. So it is going to be that bad let me actually it's not really this it's actually this pipe uh, this pipe as you can see this one this one okay now only white one hose is left this one so I'm going to disconnect this hose too let me show you this hose too then there are two screws you might be able to see this two screws that holds the thermostat housing to the cylinder block As you can see, I have disconnected this connector uh, the, and also I have uh, removed uh, terminal 50 or B, B, <coughs> uh, B plus terminal from the alternator and also uh, if I zoom that in and also the wiring uh, securing nut as well that's the down bottom one and this is the alternator uh, B plus terminal and these are the wiring the wire now I'm going to uh, remove these two bolts So this and that the top one.
uh, use this wobbly uh, this wobbly uh, <coughs> extension bar with one fourth of uh, 10 millimeter head socket and as shallow as possible. Uh, so this was the uh, bottom screw of the uh, thermostat housing. Now I'm going to remove the top one. So the top one is going to be very very easy and the bottom one because the alternator was not allowing the tool to get into the screw head uh, to remove the screw. This is thermostat housing with the thermostat. Now I'm going to test the thermostat <coughs> for its faultiness if the thermostat is stuck closed. Okay, unfortunately, this cannot be put here. It cannot be placed in the kettle. So I'm going to boil the water and then use the boil, boiled water and see if the thermostat is functioning. completely uh, closed, it's not opening at all. As you can see, either from this side too if I look, or from this side.
Okay. Uh, because the thermostat house, the thermostat with housing cannot go or cannot be placed inside the cattle, but anyway, I'm 100% uh, satisfied that this uh, thermostat is faulty because even the temperature has reached to close 90, but uh, it didn't open at all. So once again, I'm going to try, try it again. Okay, that one is the thermostat housing located there. Too many parts have to be removed to get access to the thermostat and thermostat housing. I have tested the thermostat with the housing and it's faulty. This one, this one has to be renewed. It's completely blocked. Look, I'm 100% sure that this uh, thermostat is faulty. Even here. This is boiled water. Look, tiny, tiny, look, oh, bloody, oh, this one open, so, Okay, now I'm going to order genu order genuine uh, thermostat with housing and I'm going to put that on and also I'm going to uh, renew seal here which goes here, uh, here, I'm going to put new seal, so that was Okay, so today we have got the part, we have got thermostat housing, a uh, genuine one, and it comes with the O-ring as well. So that must be replaced if you install the aftermarket that might, may not come with the O-ring. 
and also this is the two screws which holds the thermostat housing to the uh, engine block and the torque specification is uh, <coughs> 15 newton meters so I'm going to show you here uh, it's number six as you can see here here it's 15 uh, newton meter so <coughs> this is the uh, uh, thermostat housing and it's the uh, genuine Volkswagen uh, let me show you the part number in case you need this is that uh, and uh, uh, this one uh, comes with the o-ring here as you can see this is the o-ring okay and uh, also uh, you must uh, replace this one if you want if you remove the uh, coolant uh, distribution housing this one the seal must be replaced too as I have got the seal this is also a genuine part and this is the seal and more importantly uh, you must replace this item number seven as well if you uh, remove the thermostat housing and you have to uh, disconnect this pipe so this pipe is held only by this screws and this uh, this screw and this screw these two screws so when you disconnect this one and uh, you have to renew the o-ring if you don't renew the o-ring there is a possibility chance of 70 80 percent you might <coughs> confront leakage of this or the 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 the, the <coughs> excuse me the pipe may leak and then unfortunately you, you will have to do the entire task again uh, so uh, this is the o-ring this is not the normal o-ring this is very very thick uh, thick o-ring uh, which goes here here as you can see if you look at the mouse and also uh, the uh, coolant distribution housing uh, screws uh, tightening torque specification is uh, 9 newton meter as you can see it's 9 newton, newton meter so 9 so <coughs> and uh, also make sure you thoroughly clean this area this as you can see where the thermostat and the thermostat housing fits here they, you need to totally clean clean this one too if I zoom that mm -hmm. uh, you need to totally clean this area this area here where the thermostat housing fits so let's do the task so i'm going to install everything i will not be showing uh installing the uh removed parts but uh, anyway the installation is uh, the reverse of the removal uh, procedure so once i have done and i put the coolant back and I'm going to start uh, the engine and uh, the vehicle and uh, I will be taking uh, taking the vehicle to a road test drive so when the vehicle has reached to its uh, the engine has reached to its operating temperature and then at some point I will be showing that uh, the <coughs> uh, radiator uh, uh, temperature while the engine is at its operating temperature. 
So, uh, throttle body, uh, throttle valve module here, as you can see, it's uh, J338. So, uh, screw number 19, which is uh, the securing uh, screws of the throttle body to the inlet manifold, that is going to be torqued. Uh, 19 that's going to be torqued 8 newton meter and this screw which holds the dipstick tube to the throttle body this one is number 20 this one is going to be torqued 9 newton meter so throttle body holder screw 19 newton meter and a dipstick tube holder screw or bolt 9 newton meter so let me repeat that again in case i have uh, pronounced wrongly so total body holder screw number 19 8 newton meter this one and the dipstick tube holder uh, screws nine uh, screw nine newton meter okay at uh, g12 plus g30 g33 and g34 so our vehicle is in total to G12 so make sure to put G12, G12 coolant uh, as you can see G12 here as well okay as you can see I have put everything back together so I have installed everything and also I have uh, uh, put the coolant in and this is a little bit above the maximum level so uh, once the thermostat opens that's going to be subtle mm, so now I'm going to start the uh, engine or vehicle and uh, I'm going to take it to uh, road test drive Okay, I have started the vehicle and as you can see uh, the uh, trip counter is zero. So now I'm going to take the car to a road test drive. Very very good result. So it's not overheating at all. I'm on the motorway as you can see. It's 13 mile now. So I have uh, just uh, pulled in to a service station. Now I'm going to check the uh, the radiator temperature. Okay, as you can see, uh, I have driven 15.7 uh, miles, uh, but as you can see, <coughs> the uh, uh, temperature, engine coolant uh, temperature gauge is nicely stand still at 90. So now I'm going to check the radiator 
uh, temperature with this uh, which is very very useful and so this time it helped me a lot so if that can be used in the right way that's going to be very very helpful look at the temperature gauge it's 70 and here 66 so it's very very good and here Seventy-five. Remember before, and uh, here. Uh, let me. can see it's 70 here let me bring the dog 68 70 so uh, that was a good and successful course and that was a good and successful repair too and also you can see the radiator fan is not operating operating at all so the radiator temperature is 69 is 70 72. 74 64 As you can see It's 70 So And also look at the uh, Engine block temperature Cool Remember before it was 105 and 10. Look. So the coolant level has gone down. So I'm going to I'm going to turn the engine off and wait uh, until the uh, pressure is reduced. Uh, then I'm going to top up uh, the coolant and go back to the garage. as you can see I have driven the vehicle uh, for about 36.6 mile and uh, no whatsoever problem so it's time to clear the fold code and call the customer to come and collect the vehicle Okay, as you can see that this fold code has become passive so uh, this fold code 
as for the uh, stuck closed a thermostat if the sensor is not faulty so this is going to be for the closed closed stuck uh, thermostat so it says engine cooling temperature sensor to circuit high because uh, the thermistor is a negative coefficient uh, thermistor so when the uh, temperature is low the resistance is high when the te temperature is high the resistance is low so for this reason so the sensor one voltage was low uh, because there was no restriction the coolant was circulating within the engine blocks without restriction so sensor one uh, temp coolant temperature sensor voltage was low and uh, sensor two uh, coolant temperature sensor voltage was high because the blockage of or uh, stuck closed of the uh, thermistor so for this reason uh, this fault code was stored because the correlation was not met so sensor one sensor two uh, 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 correlation uh, were not in correlation so for this reason the fault code was stored so i'm going to show you sensor two as well where is located right now after cleaning after clearing this foil fault code i'm going to turn the engine off ignition on Mm. Back. No fault code. Okay, as you can see, this is the sensor one. So sensor one is located here. So coolant was circulating without any restriction so this one sensor 2 is located here so when the thermostat is closed this coolant is going to be cold so the lower the temperature the higher the resistance and the ECU will sense a higher voltage so the difference between this so when the correlation is not met so then the full code will be stored <laughs> 